So now you have a few pieces of original comic art. How do you even store it? Hello comic art people, Steve from Cantu Comics here. So you finally bought some nice pieces of comic art, but you don't have anywhere to store it. You certainly can't fold it up and roll it into a tube. The comic art gods would not be pleased, but ye have faith. I am here to show you the ways of storing and protecting your comic art. Right off the bat, whether you have one page or hundreds, you should buy Mylar bags. Just like properly storing comics, you always bag and board. The same goes for art. It's a little harder to find Mylar bags in this size, but a really good place is from Bags Unlimited. They specialize in products gearing from protecting your collectibles, whether it's comic books, art, vinyl records, or trading cards. They have you covered. It's very important to have acid-free material, and Mylar polyethylene is just that. Couple it with some acid-free backer boards and you are golden. I personally did not buy the backer boards because I already store my art inside of portfolio binders, but we'll go over those in a little bit. The ones I purchased are two mil sized at 11 half by 17 and a half with a one inch flap. The reason I went with this size is because DC art boards are slightly wider than marble. So this, this size accommodates all modern comic art. An additional option you can try are the archival one inch mounting corners. You can place these on each of the corners of your page to protect those clean, sharp edges. There are many different options for Mylar bags, such as thicker four mil or ones that have no flaps. But whenever you decide, a Mylar bag is a minimum. The next way to store your art is in portfolio binders. The most common one you see is the Itoya branded ones. The first one I bought is an 11 by 17 binder, and I quickly realized that you should that I should have done my research first. All my like Marvel pieces fit snugly, but my DC ones just wouldn't fit. This was also before I bought my Mylars, as my collection at the time was being stored on my wall in frames. I ended up buying the 13 by 19 inch binder, which became perfect for all of my comic art. I repurposed the 11 by 17 one to house my animation cells and other smaller comic art. These binders are great for storing large amounts of art as they contain 24 two-sided sleeves to store up to 48 pages. They are archival safe and acid free. For my collection, I put each of them in Mylar, then slip them in a portfolio. An interesting part is that there's an insert for the spine for you to customize it. I did the lazy way and just reversed the insert and wrote original comic art. The classy way to store your comic art is to frame it. If you have a really nice cover or a two-page splash, I would definitely recommend framing it. It can get extremely expensive to custom frame your art. I'm talking hundreds of dollars for a simple frame, especially if you add in like more items such as a printed color comic book pages. I personally bought a semi-professional mat cutter and did it myself for my Fathom two-page frame. I did mess up a little bit when I was cutting because I don't have a table large enough to accommodate it but overall it turned out pretty good. The cutter was a little under $200 and the large map boards were about under $10 each. I was quoted around $500 to frame that art and I did it myself for around half that. Plus I own the equipment. The frame was an inexpensive wood one and I replaced the plexiglass with real glass just from Home Depot. I luckily found a piece that was already cut to size but my mat cutter has a glass cutter add-on but I'll go into further detail about that in a future episode of Cantu Comics. As a note, all of the equipment and items I mentioned in this video are linked in the description below. One last way to effectively store your comic art is with a flat file cabinet. You always want to store your original art flat and drawers are perfect for this. You literally could use almost any file cabinet that's at least 11 inches wide by 17 inches deep but you should probably go larger to about 13 by 19 to have some wiggle room. There are nice flat file cabinets offered at Ikea called the Alex drawer. You see these commonly in office desk setups to prop up a tabletop to make a makeshift desk. I actually do that at work when I'm staged in an office slash gamer lifestyle scene. 
You can easily lay your art flat inside of these drawers, preferably inside of Mylar bags. You can even put the portfolio folders inside if you please. Another option is to stack the portfolio books vertically on the tabletop or bookshelf, but I prefer to keep all of my art flat. Well, that wraps up the basics of how to store your original comic book art. If there are any unique ways you display comic art, please let me know in the comments below. This leads us to the latest installment of Comic Art Spotlight. Today, I want to show you another one of my older pieces. Here is my Marvel Age Spider-Man Team-Up Issue 3, page 18, penciled by John Boy Myers and inked by Nathan Massengill. Before you say it, yes, I know I mentioned John Boy a lot on this channel. I referenced this page a few episodes ago when I bought this and a Ninja Scroll piece from him. John Boy's art is so amazing, who wouldn't want to talk about him? So in this page, it's hard to figure out the context without actually reading the issue, but Spider-Man, Kitty Pride, Dreamer, and a couple of kids that Kitty was babysitting were captured by the Morlocks, and right now they're discussing an escape plan. So why can't Kitty just face through the door and open it? Well, the Morlock Leech, he's nearby and he's suppressing all of their powers. But as soon as Dreamer was able to manifest those monkeys for the little boy, they knew Leech was far away enough that they could escape. As typical with John Boy's pencil style, there is a very manga feel to his pencil. Very tight and accurate pencil work. This piece is inked over beautifully, but you can see where John Boy marked X's for the sections of his panels to be filled with all black. There also appears to be copper colored ink in a few areas, uh, but I'm really not sure if that was intentional or if the ink is oxidated over time. The final page colors show these areas as black, but if anyone watching knows what exactly this is, please let me know below. There is one unfortunate blemish on this piece though. There is a light water stain around Spider-Man's eye on one of the panels. These things happen, but it's pretty sad to see on a one-of-a-kind art. As a note, John Boy signed the front of the page and he also included his contact information on the back and the inker signed it there as well. I assume it's there in case the inker needed to contact him for clarification on the art. So, was there anything that I missed? Don't forget to comment and like this video and hit the subscribe button for more original comic art content. In the meantime, this is Steve from Kanzu Comics signing off.